This lecture is called Powers of Integers. The title is I Got the Power, Taming the Sum. Here we're going to look at sums of integers. Now, of course, if I take a sum of integers where n goes to infinity, I get just infinity. The question here is about summing finite numbers of integers. So when I was in fifth grade, our teacher told us an untrue story about a math prodigy who was being punished, and he was told to add the first hundred integers as a punishment, the teacher thinking this would take some period of time to do. He apparently returned one minute later with the answer, and I was so intrigued by this that I decided I wanted to figure out how to do it. So let's consider the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 all the way up to n, and the technique to actually sum that series is fairly simple. Some of you may have seen it before, but even if you haven't seen it before, take a moment right now to pause and see whether or not you can think about how to do it. So please pause the video right now and see whether or not you can come up with a method for how to sum that series, that finite series, where we're summing the integers from 1 to n. Okay, I hope you've been able to come up with an idea. This is the way that I know to do it. What we do is we write the sum as one half the total of the sum written in two different orders. And so the first one is just one half the sum written in the ordinary order. And the second way is one half of the sum written in the reverse order. Now you see if I pair the first entries, I have an n with a 1. And then the second two, I have n minus 1 with a 2. And then I have n minus 3 with a 3. I have n minus 4 with a 4, and so forth. All of those terms add up to n equals 1. And if I count how many of those terms do I have, I have n of them. So I sum all of those n plus 1 terms, and I get 1 half n times n plus 1. And that is equal to the sum of the first power of all integers, which we call sum subscript 1 for first power of n. Okay, now it turns out that that method doesn't generalize to any higher power. You can try it, but it doesn't really form anything that you can sum, and the method just fails for squares or cubes or any other power. And it turns out you have to use a different method. This method is not really obvious, and it takes a bit of time to really figure out exactly how it works. So we're going to go through it carefully, as we do with all of our difficult concepts that we're trying to learn. But it is a method. It gets some intuition from the way that we summed the geometric series, and you're going to see that in just a moment. So we're going to start now by rederiving the sum of integers using this new technique. And the starting point is to look at the sums of the squares of the integers. So we look for the sum of the power that's one higher than the power that we're actually interested in. So we're looking at the sums of the squares. We'll call that sum subscript 2 because we're raising to the second power of n. And then we use it, this trick that simulates the geometric series. We're going to sum j plus 1 squared going from 1 to n and subtract from that j squared going from 1 to n. Now if you think carefully about this, I'm going to have the term 1 only appearing in the j squared term for the first term, and I'm going to have the term n plus 1 appearing only for the last term in the first part of the series, and all the other terms are going to cancel. There's a 2 that occurs when j equals 1 on the left-hand side, which will cancel with a 2 that occurs when j equals 2 on the right-hand side, and so forth for all of them. All those intermediate terms cancel. So I'm left just with two terms. This is where it's very similar to the geometric series, and it's n plus 1 squared minus 1. Now I just square that and simplify. I get n squared plus 2n plus 1 minus 1, which becomes n squared plus 2n, and I can clearly factor an n out of that, so I get n times n plus 2. Okay, so that's one way that we evaluated this sum. Now we're going to evaluate it a separate way. We're going to expand j plus 1 squared j plus 1 squared is equal to j squared plus 2j plus 1. And what you can see is the j squareds cancel out. And what's left is the sum of integers from 1 to n plus the sum of 1 from 1 to n. So we call that twice the sum of integers to the first power plus the sum of integers raised to the zeroth power 
Well, the sum of integers raised to the first power, that's the thing we're trying to get. The sum of 1 from j equals 1 to n, well, that's n terms, each term being 1. So that sum is just equal to n. And the total is equal to what we calculated before, n times n plus 2. So this means that 2 sum of 1 is equal to n times n plus 2 minus n. You work that out, you get n times n plus 1. Or sum 1 of n, if I divide by 2 on both sides, is equal to 1 half n times n plus 1. And that's the answer that we got before. But now it turns out this method will work for higher powers. So let's show how you do it now for k equals 2. So once again, remember, we have to start with one power higher than the one that we're interested in. So we look at the k equals 3 sums. Sum j equals 1 to n of j plus 1 cubed minus j cubed. Every term cancels except the first and the last term, so I get n plus 1 cubed minus 1. And if I expand that out and cancel out the 1 minus 1, I'm left with n times n squared plus 3n plus 3. I leave it as an exercise for you to verify that indeed that is precisely what comes out. And now we're going to do the expansion of the j plus 1 cubed minus j cubed. And we're going to see that that is equal to the j cubed terms will cancel. So I'm left with 3j squared plus 3j plus 1. And I can write that as 3 sum sub 2 of n, the sum of the squares of powers, plus 3 sum sub 1 of n, the sum of integers up to n, plus th sum sub 0 of n, which is just going to equal n. And that now equals that right-hand side that we got in the upper line. So we're going to now solve for 3 sum underscore 2 of n, the sum of the squares, by substituting in the known answers we have for sum, the sum of integers and the sum of 1s. So I get 3 halves times n times n plus 1, because there's a 3 in front of the sum underscore 1. And I get uh, n for the sum underscore 0. And now that is equal to what I had on the top line. Now I just have some algebra I have to go through. I'm going to let you do that algebra. And please do do that algebra. And you should see what you get is sum sub 2 of n is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. You're going to have the opportunity to do the next one on the homework, and we're going to use these identities to figure out how to integrate powers of x following the techniques that an Italian mathematician named Cavalieri did in the 17th, early 17th century, and that's going to be the subject of our next video.